Hello and welcome to Quartz Light Your Car Brochure channel. In today's episode for Ford Friday, we're going to be looking at the Mark 1 Ford Granada for 1975. <laughs> Hello and welcome back and if you're new to Quarterlight we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s sometimes beyond that as well so if you're interested in cars and car brochures please consider subscribing anyway back to today's episode yes we're looking at the 1975 Mark 1 Ford Granada we've been on a bit of a Christmassy journey um, looking at this car brush it's very Christmassy themed December 1975 Ford full range brochure and try and decide which car you would like in your stocking for Christmas 75 we've pretty much done the full range now and we're up to the Mark 1 Ford Granada so let's have a look at that for Ford Friday so in last episode this is where we, we left off looking at the Capri specifications trying to decide which one of those Mark II Capris we would have and now we're up to this the Ford Granada this will still be a Mark I of course more luxury more value for money those who've been looking at this so far you know everything in this brochure has all been about VFM value for money Anyway, let's open the first page and see how this Ranger Granada starts off. And this is where it does start off, the not even the L Granada. And I always find these base models very interestingly and un unusually. We got a nice double page spread of the base model. A very poverty spec vehicle. At the top here it says Granada Saloon, big car economy. And then interestingly after that it says a Granada for the price of a console. So before this this uh, late 75 we kind of added the Granada and the console. So the console was like the lower spec versions of a Granada. And then the highest spec versions were called the Granada. Console name has gone, late 75 remember, this is December 75. So the base models have now got the Granada name, but kind of weirdly, a Granada for the price of the console. Well, the console was really just a Granada, so a little bit strange. So, but like, you're paying less to get a Granada name, I guess, is what they're trying to say. Let's start by looking at some of this text and let's have a look at some of these interesting pictures for this very basic Granada. So the Granada saloons come fully equipped with heated rear windows, radio ply tyres, servo assisted front disc brakes, dual line brake system, reversing lamps, hazard warning flashers, fabric trim, loop pile carpet, reclining front seats, door mounted driver's mirror and so much more. That's Ford value for money tells you a little bit about the body then it tells us we can only have this as a two litre and then we get the exterior equipment I'm not going to read the whole text but you can see it's very basic stuff and you know the introductions kind of like told us a bit of this um, very interesting um, on there it tells us we do actually get a driver's door mirror if you remember the other 75 Fords this is the only base model that came with a driver's door mirror all the others didn't have any door mirrors on them at all so I guess we should be grateful there is one on there and then lower down it tells us the interior equipment again well, a lot of this uh, information has already been mentioned it's very basic stuff so I'm not going to really talk through it we'll probably sort of just point out some extra things that the higher spec models have but I think if you pause your screen you'll probably just be able to make that out if you really don't want to read the full text anyway let's have a look at some of the images and it gives us a better idea how lowly spec this Granada was so as we zoom in on the base model I think you can really understand how basic this base model Granada was in 75. There really is just the essential equipment really. Big blanking plates up here is where the radio would go. Um, I think the clock would go down here somewhere. And obviously it hasn't got things like a 
rev counter on there either does it i think one of the interesting things um, is at the bottom here if we look at this text it says the granada saloon is not fitted with a trip recorder as illustrated so amazingly it's telling us that there's more equipment on this picture than the car actually got so the little trip recorder down here must have not been on the base model amazing that a picture like that there are pieces that the base model didn't even get that are shown on here but i mean i don't think i've seen such a more basic dash than that and we did just very briefly see this picture but we're back to it again um, very base and you can see we've got yeah we've got the driver's mirror no passenger of course but you know that's not unusual for this time period um, looks like we've got some sort of cutouts here for extra lights that aren't fitted the window treatment is all black with the higher spec models we do have some bright work some chrome type treatments looks like we do get some kind of a uh, some kind of stripe on there so we should be grateful that for that i guess and obviously these are very basic black wheels with these sort of like chrome covers over the top really making it stand out as the base model and here is the side view you can just about make out the badge on the side the two liter which like we looked at a moment ago was the only engine available for the base model and then finally the interior picture again showing how basic that dashboard is particularly it looks very basic with that clock blanking plate on the sorry not the clock the radio blanking plate on the the clock would have gone down here somewhere all the basic kind of like hides it rather cleverly in this picture but you know no head restraints um, even for the front passengers and I guess I've just noticed on there maybe it wasn't a stripe it was like more of a sort of rubbing strip than a stripe on this example and we've talked about this before but I think this is again one of them examples of a very base model um, Ford that you probably would struggle to find in the showroom but you know gives it that the Granada starts at price and also interestingly as it points out here the console is no longer around for that more basic uh, vehicle so here is your basic Granada now and as we turn the page I can't help but think the Granada L is really where most people would have considered the range from they probably would have said I just want a basic Granada I'll get the L I'm sure people didn't even consider that base model but here it is much nicer wheels i think are the standout point i look at the rear and it reminds me kind of like the granada mark one is actually one of my favorite granadas i do like the back end um, it looks really good in my opinion anyway so we'll start again looking at the text because it'll tell us what this has above that very base model which is a little bit interesting so text wise now it starts quite amusingly saying granada l adding luxury to luxury so apparently in the ford world in 75 that previous model was luxury i find it very hard to believe that that was ever regarded as luxury but anyway this is certainly more than that base model had more luxurious value for money it says so the Granada L comes fully equipped with sports road wheels, head restraints, rear seat armrest, driver's door mirror, fabric trim, hazard warning flashes, halogen headlamps, a loop pile carpet, reclined front seats and so much more. That's Ford's value for money body the same as the Granada Saloon engine we do have a choice of getting that 2 litre engine but interestingly we can now have a 2.5 V6 which is certainly a big step up so then this is the exterior equipment above that very base model and certainly we'll be able to see if we can spot some of these things when we look at the pictures in a bit more detail um, so what do we have two rectangular halogen headlamps with integral side lights i'm sure were they not the same but anyway sports road wheels rubber bumper inserts additional bright trim in lieu of black treatment and a black back panel interior equipment um, it's got head restraints dual tone horn 
we do have a trip recorder now, rear courtesy lights, dipping rear view mirror, glove box with illumination and vanity mirror and also a clock. So it doesn't sound very much but it's kind of like more things you would really expect to have on this vehicle in the first place. So first of all it does look a much nicer vehicle and like it says the L gets this sort of black panel on there which certainly really suits the car and we get a lot more of this bright chrome work around the windows which certainly improves the look and also this uh, chrome work around the wheel arches as well and these sporty wheels I think just by looks alone particularly in this rather nice shade of red it certainly looks a step above doesn't it and then the front shot yeah it does look a little bit similar to the base model but we do have these rubber inserts in these front bumpers and as it explained here and I was a bit confused by it describing them as rectangular halogen headlamps on this model now yeah the previous model was rectangular as well but it's just describing the base model as being semi sealed headlights or a slight difference there as well and then a little slightly different view you can make out of them head restraints that this model's now got looks like the bedding still says this particular one is a two litre interior in this particular shade certainly looks a lot brighter but i think the main thing is those head restraints interior nice instantly looks nicer i think um it's showing on there this radio where that blanking plate was on that base model we do now have a clock showing there although i mean it's still no rev counter it's showing a trip recorder which this model does actually have so even though it's still a very basic model i think this is where the range would start for most people now you really do feel like you've stepped up when you move to the next model the gl it certainly looks a more of a something a little bit special i think the things that jump out to me are these the overriders and these fog lamps this one's also showing a vinyl roof treatment on this one as well doesn't it we'll come back to the pictures we'll have a look at the text first though so granada gl when you want to travel in first class unequaled value for money the granada gl comes fully equipped with leather covered steering wheel overriders sports road wheels vinyl roof sunshine roof uh, remote control driver's door mirror head restraints push button radio boot carpet fabric trim inertia reel seat belts and so much more that's ford value for money and you can also see on there we've still got that two litre engine 2.5 is now gone replaced with a wonderful three litre v6 exterior equipment let's pick out a few things that that's got above so that vinyl roof is certainly something manual operated sunshine roof with tilting device um, oh bright moldings on all windows of course wheel edges boot lid black painted back panel them overriders were well, chrome exhaust trim halogen headlamps separate direction indicators fog lamps now sports road wheels with rim embellishers oh we've got rim embellishers nice let's look at the interior like i say we're certainly stepping it up a little bit now so interior we've got a trip meter tachometer oil pressure gauge ammeter warning light for handbrake leather covered steering wheel power assisted steering on the three litre dual tone horn push button radio with balance control etc etc reclining fabric trim from bucket seats with unique style and added comfort with valances oh we'll have to have a look at them seats oh there's a nice picture of those uh, central console with a clock vanity mirror what else have we got on here carpet in the boots so certainly like i say a step above um and it feels like it's quite a nice step above the l model now this is certainly showing it's an automatic now i think the thing that stands out though is the uh, introduction of a rev counter now on this model certainly more gauges in there gives you an idea of the boot size and also this is showing that manually operated sunshine roof with that vinyl trim it's giving you a look at that seat it's a little bit more comfort i think 
not the best view of the front seats but you can just about glimpse um, there the main image apologies it is on the crease line unfortunately um, but it looks like we've got the same wheels as the L but we have got these rim embellishers just to brighten up these fog lights these overriders making it look something a little bit more special zooming in a little bit you can just about make out that this one is the three liter so a three liter with an automatic now the next page is kind of like a double page so it's looking at the granada s up here and then it starts introducing the estates but we'll certainly start with that sporty granada s okay so the granada s superb performance superb value superb value for money the granada s comes fully equipped with a sports steering wheel glistening dampers power steering fabric trim reclining front seats halogen headlamps has a warning flashes heated rear window head restraints and so much more um, interesting that you can only have this one with the three liter engine so that's interesting let's just move down exterior equipment so what makes this a little bit special let's have a look at it um, obviously the dampers variable rates rear springs anti-roll bars like a different tire um, I'm, I'm assuming anyway s badging auxiliary halogen and driving lights yeah driving lamps were also a bit of a staple weren't they for ford when they were trying to do a bit more of a sporty model interior equipment we've got the tachometer trip recorder ammeter oil pressure gauge handbrake warning light sports steering wheel dual tone horn rear courtesy lights dipping rear view mirror glove box with illumination vanity mirror clock vinyl fascia applique sports gear shift knob and power steering so now we've, we've certainly got more gauges on there as you can see and i suppose the advantage of having this steering wheel you can kind of like see the gauges a bit better but i don't know about you but if i was buying this car as a second-hand vehicle i would assume somebody's nipped to halfords and thrown an aftermarket steering wheel on there I don't know if I particularly like that steering wheel to be fair another little bit of a glimpse at that steering wheel and the interior a very black dark looking interior on this sports model and then from the outside yeah all you can get is a three litre so this will be a three litre badge on there sort of no chrome embellishments around the wheels etc no sort of overriders on the bumpers but i think the most noticeable thing is those driving lights on the front and then in contrast we move on to the estates quite like the granada estates actually and you know huge lord luggers aren't they let's face it, it looks like just one fold down rear sort of bench at the back there but vast vehicle if you did want to move things around you know if you was an antique dealer or whatever you wanted or just a large family great lord lugan can i forget about these mark one um estates i don't know when the last time i saw one of these and um, obviously 70s fours were never renowned for resisting rust so i'm sure we lost lots of them then where that way uh interesting sort of wheel covers on there we do have head restraints on this model it tells us at this time we can only have this as an l or a gl not sure what badge that is i don't know if we can move in a little bit further it does just look like a two liter by the looks of it so it says granada l and gl estate cars big on luxury big on carrying capacity big on value for money the granada estate comes fully equipped with a 77 cubic foot load capacity head restraints driver's door mirror fabric trim hazard warning flashes halogen headlamps loop pile carpet reclining front seats tailgate wash wipe and so much more so it gives you a little bit of an idea about the body then and it moves on to the engine so you can have this as a two liter or a 2.5 v6 on the l a three liter v6 on the gl and exterior and interior equipment basically on there it's just saying the l is like the saloon but it's got a rear wash wipe system the um the gl is just like the gl 
saloon but with a rear wash wipe system and then again later on it says in the interior equipment the L is just like the L saloon but with a folding seat um, the GL is just like the GL um, with a folding rear seat although it does tell us the GL estate doesn't have a folding rear armrest with twin speakers I guess to do with that folding mechanism who knows and then finally we come to Ford's flagship models the Granada gear of course certainly a car you aspire to have no matter what model in the range you had the gear was always something to look up to I think in the 70s and then also this a lot of people's favorite Ford's the Granada coupe and certainly if you didn't need the space what a nice luxury car that was by 75 they kind of like played with the coupe a little bit a little bit more straighter lines than what it originally came with and this unusual pointy window treatment so it did change slightly by 75 but still a very striking looking car so the Granada Gear, Saloon and Coupe, the last word in luxury, gear style, value for money. The Granada Gear, Saloon and Coupe comes fully equipped with tinted glass all round, vinyl roof, sunshine roof, remote controlled driver's mirror, halogen headlamps, fog lamps, digital clock now, wow, integrated adjustable head restraints, colour keyed cloth trim, real wood veneer on fascia, glove box and door cappings, leather covered steering wheel, push button twin radio, uh, alloy we road wheels, inertia reel, seat belts and so much more. A little bit of info on the body there if you want to read that engine choice is 3 litre v6 and you can also have it as a lowly 2 litre and then we look at the exterior equipment what it has above that very base granada saloon and you can imagine quite a bit uh, tinted glass bright trim vinyl roof that sunroof alloy wheels i guess it's certainly a big step up um body side moldings overriders remote control door mounted drivers mirror halogen headlamps fog lights gear grill and badging the all important gear badge black back panel luggage compartments and then the granada gear coupe has the same exterior equipment as the granada gear saloon with the addition of opening rear side windows and a laminated windscreen and then both the Granada Gear Saloon and the Granada Gear Coupe have the same interior equipment as the Granada Saloon with the extras digital clock. What was the picture of that digital clock? So that's quite unusual to have a digital clock in the mid 70s. Deeply contoured reclining seats with head restraints, uh, Beaumont cloth trim, colour keyed throughout interior so no leather interior surprisingly rear real wood veneer trim on fascia and door cappings leather covered steering wheel push button radio twin speakers and balance control rear courtesy lights dipping rear view mirror locking glove box with light grab handles passenger straps and map pockets on back of front seats extensive sound insulation inertia reel seat belts to drivers and front passengers seats um, trip meter tachometer oil pressure gauge ammeter power assisted steering on the three liter foam carpet underlay to the footwell areas deep cut pile carpeting extending to foot of doors so certainly by today's standards i mean it's still a, quite a sparsely equipped car really but for the mid 70s quite high spec still a little bit surprised no leather trim but nevertheless we do get those nice alloy wheels fog lamps overriders this different grill three liter badging on here this one and the gear badging still only a driver's door mirror surprisingly no passenger door mirror so that's certainly a little bit interesting and of course the vinyl roof and the sunshine roof and then the uh, granada gear coupe i'm sure a lot of people are going to say this is the car for them for christmas i'm going to assume just because of the styling of it it was certainly something a little bit different you know your top of the range granada but uh, i don't need that 
than rear seats this is just for me what a huge car for just a two-door car in europe i would say interesting treatment of the vinyl roof and these very sharp lines as it just goes out of focus apologies for that i've kind of like just zoomed into the back and this unusual styling an interesting car for sure um, like i say although i think like i did mention around about 74 the coupe got more straighter lines so it was slightly different than what it was originally styled and then we've got this large sort of rear opening window it looks like a pop out type style and of course the three litre badging and the gear badging interior shot and as you can see this is the gear saloon quite a nice trim actually um, lots of wood capping as you would expect on the top model lots of wood around there again this is showing this as an automatic but quite a nice interior actually for the mid 70s i'm sure if you bought this car you would have felt a little bit special certainly at that time period before i forget yeah there's no image is there of that digital clock i presume it's going to be down here somewhere but unfortunately that steering wheel is in the way it also kind of shows you know ever changing these models 76 new specifications will be coming and then kind of like talking about 76 if we look at this picture down the bottom of this 75 um granada coupe we look at the 76 brochure they decided to use exactly the same image on the 76 brochure but this time let's color that particular vehicle in brown interesting how they try and trick us to think things are updating okay granada specification time transmission for speed all synchro mesh um, and of course an automatic is possible as well standard on the granada gear models though steering rack and pinion no power steering is not available for two liter models brakes um, your typical uh, front disc rear drums looks like the three litre v6 has got ventilated front disc brakes though suspension front is independent with double wishbone isolated by rubber mountings coil springs lubricated for live ball joints subframe mounted anti-roll bar and at the rear independent semi-trailing arm coil spring type with two plunging consistent constant velocity joints on each half shaft whole unit mounted on bonded rubber insulators to the body again it says granada gear models to the new specifications will be available in earlier 76 and then the engines so that base model the 1998 cc which was used actually throughout the range wasn't it um not to 16 12.4 seconds uh not to 60 in 12.4 seconds sorry and then a maximum speed of 101 miles per hour and then we can go for that uh, 2495cc v6 in nine seconds quite respectful for a big car in the 70s maximum speed of 108 miles per hour and then that big three liter the 2994cc v6 0 to 60 9.2 seconds for the manual 10.3 for the auto maximum speed 113 for the manual 110 for the auto so pretty quick car for for the size of it options list for that base model the l s g l interesting how the s there is shown before the gl uh, gear and then the gear coupe and then the estates the l and the gl the blue square means they're optional equipment so on that very base granada saloon it's telling us you know pretty much everything apart from power steering you can option on that base model which would be weird wouldn't it really because if you optioned all those things on that base model probably cost more than the l so i always think you're much better just going for the next model up but it was possible by the looks of it so interesting stuff um looks like you can also option vinyl seats if you're a, a particularly strange there 
And then at the opposite page, as we're at the end of the brochure, these are options obviously for all the different models. So you can get options, you know, obviously automatic transmission, a little bit of a look at the lever there. Radio looking very basic, um, vinyl roof, sunshine roof, halogen headlamps, tinted glass, easy rear window and um, metallic paint and the sports road wheels, all possible options for various different Fords. And then finally on the back page, uh, it's published, a little bit of information about the brochure really, published by the car merchandising department, Ford Motor Company, Brentwood, Essex. A little bit of the code there, FA221-10, December 1975. So there we go, that is the uh, Ford full range brochure for December 1975, bit of a Christmassy themed edition. And we asked when we first started looking at this brochure, which vehicle would you pick for your Christmas present on December 1975? Jot down in the comments which one you would pick. Um, I was kind of like almost a little bit tempted by that Granada Coupe and I'm sure a lot of people are going to pick that here with the V6 3 litre engine I'm sure what a great pick I kind of like was almost there then I was almost thinking a very strange base model Granada would be a very interesting car but in the end I plumped for this the uh, Capri 3 litre uh, S and in the same colour as this, I think black with the gold stripes. I think it looks a little bit special. And you know, those Mark II Capris, very much the forgotten Capri, but I think that almost makes me want it a little bit more as it was not as loved as the Mark I or indeed the Mark III. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. What I've really enjoyed doing as I run up to Christmas, um, the Christmas schedule for Quartzlight. It's going to be the same as normal. No, I'm not going to be recording episodes on Christmas Day. They're all going to be pre-recorded, but they're still going to fall on the normal days. So tomorrow, Saturday, you'll have your normal Saturday special. Monday, you'll get a bit of an episode on Monday for Christmas Day um, and Wednesday and Friday. It's just a normal schedule, but um, who knows? You may watch them, you may not, but... For now, we'll certainly say have a great Christmas. And if, you know, Christmas isn't your thing, you know, watch lots of YouTube episodes. And, you know, now we're very lucky. We don't have to watch Christmassy themed things if that's not your thing. Lots of episodes in my back catalogue and there's other um, programs out there. One of my favourites, of course, is Hubnuts, a great YouTuber and uh, some great episodes there as well. So look after yourself. Uh, keep an eye on your friends and family. It can be a difficult time of year, but we'll say Merry Christmas. Hope you have a wonderful uh, Christmas and the days leading up to it. Thank you for watching. You take care. All the best and goodbye. <laughs>